live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE, covering E3 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Los Angeles Convention Center at E3. It's amazing, it's like 68,000 people. They're in every single hall, they're out in the streets, they're in the hotels, they're at LA Live, they're all over the place for really the biggest gaming conference, I think, in the world. And we're excited to have our next guest. He's Dana Jan, he's the design director for Ready at Dawn, and you just introduced a new game, right? Great to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, that's true. We just announced Echo Combat last year in October, and today we're showing off on the floor. Private uh, private beta still, or are you going to public beta, you said, soon? Yeah, we just had a closed beta, actually. Um, we're moving into open beta, and that's going to be June 21st. Right, pretty amazing, though. You guys have not been around that long, and this is already your third game. Well, the studio's been around for a while, you know, so we've been making games for a long time. Uh, this is actually kind of a new foray for us, though, going into VR. We released a game called Lone Echo last year, right. uh, and Echo Arena was a multiplayer mode that we uh, also launched simultaneously with Lone Echo. So, yeah, this game is new and fresh, but it's, you know, we've been developing VR now for a little over two years. Right. So, from a design perspective in the VR space, what what is uh, some of the special considerations you have to be thinking about, either challenges and, and opportunities? Yeah, I mean, some of the challenges are obviously performance is a big deal for us. Um, the game has to run at 90 frames per second on Oculus per eye, so that's rendering essentially like two different 90 frames per eye? Yeah, it's really fast. You have to render 90 frames per second, otherwise it gets really uncomfortable for the user. Um, so we optimize a lot of our experiences, and it's even like some of the ideas that we have, we have to figure out how to make them viable at that frame rate. Um, and we have a lot of high fidelity body movement going on in uh, Lone Echo, Echo Arena, and now Echo Combat. Uh, we do a lot of IK work to kind of represent a, a full body avatar that honors essentially head, hand, and because our game takes place in zero G, we have this floating body that has to convincingly flow behind you wherever you go. Right. So, yeah, it's actually you know it's a pretty big challenge for us as both designers, developers, and just on a technical standpoint to get all that to kind of harmoniously work together. Right. So. Um, other thing, just in terms of the gameplay inside VR, because the other thing is, right, you don't necessarily control which direction they're looking. I mean, how do you kind of direct the uh, the player to where you want them to look and where you want them to participate? That's a great question. Uh, actually, so part of the beauty of VR is we try to do some of that like you would for a conventional game, you know, trying to use lighting, trying to basically divine, design environments with, you know, things, cues, details that would maybe help people along. But ultimately, you're as free as you are, just like right now, you and I, we can look all over the place. Right. We don't really want to restrict that. You know, part of the beauty of VR is the ultimate freedom. If you want to kind of go, you know, look in that little corner underneath you for the whole game, you really can. And we try to, as much as possible, make that something that's beneficial too. We try to, you know, coat every little bit of our worlds with something that's interesting to right. find, discover. Right. So, yeah, it's free, freedom of movement, freedom of, you know, wherever you want to be, whatever you want to do. Right. So we're doing this as part of the, the Western Digital Data Makes Possible program. And really, as, as we get closer and closer to, you know, kind of infinite store, infinite compute, infinite networking, you just said you've got it, you've got designs and you've got yeah. ideas that today, even today, you can't necessarily put into play. So as you look forward for the opportunities when all these things are basically going to be close to infinite at close to zero cost, what are some things that excite you? Where do you see kind of using that power to do a better job or a different job in your storytelling? Sure, yeah, I mean, the horsepower that you need to run these kind of games is actually pretty staggering. Um, we, we compute a lot of stuff on the GPUs, the CPUs. Uh, we have a lot of physics oriented things in the game because VR is really big into like, you know, letting you kind of touch everything and manipulate stuff and it doesn't feel like you're really somewhere. You don't feel present unless you can actually interact with the environments. Um, and for that, we have to basically create tons and tons and tons of objects. We have physics constraints and things that are costly for you know the, the compute computation cycles. And then there's like memory issues. You know, we have streaming that we have to kind of get better at. There's uh, these worlds are very large and so to store the things that you're going to see and do takes a lot of actual you know hard drive space and the speed at which we can load and unload things is a critical factor in terms of you know unlocking the freedom of your experience. Right. So when you get more horsepower, right, new processor comes out, you get more memory, whatever, I mean, do you already have stuff keyed up where you want to use that? Is it is it more uh, realistic nature of, of the graphics? Is it speed? I mean, what are some of the, the priorities that you would immediately apply if you had some more horsepower tomorrow? Yeah, certainly, I mean, there are things that we absolutely know about, like, you know, there's texture resolution, there's, like I said, there's physics objects, there are just things that we end up going, that's too costly to do, we're going to have to maybe you know, stop doing that or cut back on it or scope back. Um, we do look at creating settings and things for users who actually have more high-end machines to actually turn that stuff back on. But I think every time we kind of go into another, uh, you know, 
design kind of exercise and started looking at what do we want to do in VR, I think we're surprised at what does it take to actually accomplish it. And so right. I'm not sure I'm not sure I know right now fully what we're going to start getting into and what kind of hardware that might require. But you know, every day is just a different challenge, and that's part of the excitement of working in right, VR. Right, right. And I was going to say, and also obviously the trade-offs. I mean, you could go bananas on the texture, but is you know at some point is it law of diminishing returns in terms of the storytelling, in terms of the experience, because you can't optimize across sure. all the potential variables. Yeah, no, you have to pick and choose, and that, you're right. Like basically, we look at you know what are our goals, what are we trying to get out of this experience, what do we want the user to really get out of it, and then we have to compromise. We have to make some of those smart choices. Um, but I do think at some point, you know, we'll have to make less compromises as the technology gets better, um, and certainly things like resolution. If the headsets have higher resolution, then it makes sense to put more resolution into the textures because now you can actually see it. And until we kind of hit that synergy where both of those are unlocked, it'll never be infinite, obviously, but right. to where they're they're more right. in sync with each other, you know, maybe we we can make that compromise now, but maybe in the future we won't. Yeah, the headset's a whole nother bucket of technology is, that yeah. you guys have but to they're awesome. Uh, I mean, yeah, we're doing. I think I think it's really impressive to me how far we've come with the headset technology, and I think in the next few years we're just going to see even crazier advances. Yeah. so I'm really excited about Not it. Not just slapping the phone in the uh, in the cardboard box like a couple years ago. Here's your I VR know, box. Right? That's that's not that long ago if you it think was. about it, really. <laughs> All right, Dana, we'll uh, give a shout out. What's the date for the public beta so people know where to go and how to get involved? Yeah, our open beta is going to be uh, starting June 21st. Uh, they can sign up at, on Oculus.com. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to people getting in there and seeing what their impressions are and taking the feedback. All right, well Dana, thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, stopping by. Great, thank you very much. All right, he's Dana, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from E3 at the LA Convention Center. Thanks for watching.